preaching professor who told us about a discouraging experience he had. He graduated at the top of his class at Princeton Seminary. But as church assignments were given to the graduating class, he noticed that the largest churches with the, lar- with the largest salaries were being assigned to the tall and handsome men. <laughs> his assignment was far more modest, and he always felt like the fact that he was short and dumpy had a little something to do with that. In the first reading for the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, we find Samuel struggling with a similar bias. You see, God had rejected Saul as king and sent him to the family and sent Samuel to the family of Jesse in Bethlehem to anoint a new king. When Samuel saw Eliab, he thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But God responded with words that in some ways are a comfort to men like my preaching professor and myself. (laughs) Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. It's a special kind of church that would call a dumpy short pastor or a chubby old man like myself who walks with a limp. But in God's eyes, it doesn't matter whether we are blessed with features other people find attractive. It is human nature to judge a book by its cover. That's why publishers put so much effort into the design of the book covers. But God sees what we can't see. He sees every human heart. God is more like an MRI or PET scan machine that can see past the surface to what is going on inside us. He looks at the heart. And so, after Jesse had paraded his seven eldest sons past Samuel, all of whom God did not call, the youngest boy was called from the fields where he was tending the sheep. As David arrived, God said, Rise and anoint him. This is the one. In Acts 13, verse 22, the Apostle Paul is quoted as saying, God testified concerning him, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. David was horribly flawed and did some terrible things. But what I love most about David is the prayers of repentance he left us in the Psalms, like Psalm 51. He was desperate to regain fellowship with the Lord. The world only sees what's happening on our surface. Perhaps knowing that God is less concerned with that and more concerned with what is in our hearts, like David, we should pray. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Thank you.